Right now on CBS 12 News this morning, as the state deals with hundreds of open teaching positions, educators from one local school district are now concerned that an important vote could impact their pay. I love where I work. I love my school. And I really hate to see my colleagues leave. It's, it's disheartening. Coming up, the county's push to renew a property tax within the district that, if passed, would prevent this from happening. A South Florida child dies after being left in a hot car while his parents went to work. Another heartbreaking story of negligence in this summer heat will tell you if the parents are facing any charges. And keep an eye on, uh, on a couple of showers that we have coming across parts of the area this morning. I've got a closer look at the rest of your day. It's a new day. This is CBS 12 News This Morning. Hello, welcome to CBS 12 News This Morning. I'm Matt Lincoln. And I'm Sam Kerrigan. Thanks so much for starting your Wednesday with us. Let's get a check on that forecast. We'll get right over to meteorologist Lorna Lesky. It's a nice looking sunrise behind you guys there. Skies mostly dry this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. Keeping an eye though on some rain <coughs> that's off the coast of northern Broward. That's slowly moving <coughs> northwest into Boca right now. It's very small. <coughs> it's one of those mornings, guys. Stand by. We're good. Okay, here's your hour by hour. That southeast wind is pulling a few clouds and showers along the coastline early this morning. Here's 3.30 this afternoon, thunderstorms then inland. Here's 5.15. We all have the chance to see rain today, especially if you live along the coast, but because we have a southeast wind, it's mostly going to be moving off towards the west. Of course, today will also be very hot. Temperatures are warming quickly. We are back in the upper 80s by 11 o'clock. Matt, Sam. Lauren, thank you. Go get a drink of water now. 602 is the time. Check it on that drive. West Palm Beach to Port St. Lucie. All clear on I-95. It takes you just under 40 minutes right now. Traffic tracker 12 cruising along in Palm Beach County. This is a look at Australian Avenue in West Palm Beach. We're not tracking any crashes or delays. We are your teachers. We are your front line. Treat us with the dignity and respect we deserve. Marion County school teachers outraged at district leaders over proposed changes that could affect their pay in a time where schools are having trouble filling hundreds of teacher openings. This whole week we've been talking to all of our local districts about these teacher vacancies and the impact that it could have on our kids' education. Right now, Martin County schools are hoping to renew a property tax to avoid any teacher salary cuts. And our Cara Duffy joining us now live from the Martin County School District in Stewart County. This is all going to boil down to what voters decide in a primary election coming up next month. That's right, Matt, and securing these funds play a big role when it comes to backing several essential school initiatives. And keep in mind this property tax that they will find on the ballot next month. It isn't new for the past four years. It's already secured millions of dollars towards things like school safety, mental health programs, professional development, academic initiatives, as well as teacher recruitment and retention. That's a big one, of course. Martin County School Board members say the property tax would generate more than 13.5 billion dollars that would be spread amongst those five categories. At a special school board meeting just last night, teachers and parents shared their concern about how any changes to the budget could impact them during these already difficult times. We have lost too many teachers to surrounding counties. I love where I work. I love my school and I really hate to see my colleagues leave. It's, it's disheartening. I cannot pay to live in this county. My rent was just raised $550. This is, this is what not getting paid enough looks like. And the level of frustration, anger, and stress is immense. Yeah, while school board members say they feel disheartened by their concerns, they did say that a majority of the budget breakdown as it stands right now would actually benefit teachers. If the tax is renewed by voters, leaders say they plan to allocate about $10 million for teacher salaries. Now, in the meantime, school board members will continue to work on how the funds will be broken down if the tax is approved. Keep in mind, they will be voting on this next Tuesday. That's the breakdown of the more than $13 million. But again, it will then be up to vote during the primary election come next month. Matt, Sam, back to you. 
Kara, thank you. And tomorrow, the Martin County School District is holding a job fair to make sure our kids have all the staff necessary on campus for the start of the school year. They're looking for teachers, school bus drivers, food service workers, and more. These are the people who make sure our kids are getting to and from school safely and the ones who feed our kids breakfast and lunch every day. All important roles that need to be filled here. The Director of Recruitment and Retention tells us some hours can be flexible to match your kids' school schedule. Teaching is one of those careers that you really truly are giving back and I think people like that. Um, you also as a teacher can decide to work the shortened kind of that nine month work schedule which is very appealing to some folks but another thing that's really appealing in Florida is that you could work that schedule but then in the summer you might be able to be a scuba diving instructor or a, a, a camp coach or something like that. The job fair is at Indian River State College's Chastain campus tomorrow. You are encouraged to register before attending. It all starts at 3 p.m. Now, the Palm Beach County School District is also having more job fairs this week. Today, you can apply for bus driver, maintenance technician, and custodial positions at the West Technical Education Center in Belle Glade and tomorrow at district headquarters in West Palm Beach. We have all the information you need right now on our website, cbs12.com. Well, this morning, families of the 19 children and two teachers who were killed in the Uvalde, Texas school shooting are furious after surveillance video from inside Robb Elementary School was leaked. They were supposed to see this video first this weekend before it was released publicly. The video shows officers waiting in the hallway for 77 minutes as the suspect attacked, and despite being armed with at least 13 rifles and ballistic shields. Now, we're going to warn you, a video you are about to see may be difficult to watch. Take a look. You see at the top of your screen, the shooter armed with an AR-15 style weapon enters the school. He walks down a hallway and now watch at the bottom of your screen when a young boy turns just around the corner as the shooter opens fire into the classroom. The fire goes on for two and a half minutes. Moments later, the first police officers enter the school. They go down this hallway and approach the classroom, but don't enter. When more gunfire is heard, they retreat. For more than an hour, dozens of officers with rifles and shields are waiting in the hall. One even uses the hand sanitizer on the wall. More than an hour after the gunman entered the school, officers finally go down that hallway, breach the classroom door, and kill the shooter. Several parents spoke moments after saying the leaked video is unacceptable. I have to do this. I don't want to hear my children screaming. I didn't want to hear the gunfire. That wasn't needed. That was unnecessary. We are the parents that lost our children. We're supposed to do this together first, not for the world. We're suffering, and I know the world is suffering too, but these were our babies. Our babies that were taken from us. So to the person that leaked it, screw you. Investigators are expected to reveal preliminary findings of a report detailing the police response in the coming days. The Uvalde Schools Police Chief Pete Arredondo is no longer a member of the City Council. The board accepted his resignation last night. 609 right now. Pre-trial hearings continue to determine exactly what evidence the jury will see during the sentencing trial of the Parkland school shooter. The defense team says certain evidence should be eliminated from the trial and kept confident confidential. This includes a detailed psychology test that analyzed Nicholas Cruz and his behaviors as a child. Prosecutors say the defense's argument is meaningless, citing conflicting reports between two different psychologists. Now we will be live from the Broward County Courthouse for opening arguments on Monday. Jurors will recommend to the judge if Cruz should get the death penalty or life in prison. Cruz pleaded guilty last year to killing 17 people at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in 2018. You can count on CBS 12 to bring you the latest on the sentencing trial on air and online at CBS12.com. Well, 609 now, we have all been feeling the massive heat in South Florida, and it's a reminder it can be very dangerous. Right now, no charges have been filed in the death of a three-year-old boy who was left in a hot car at a Miami Garden school. Police say the child's father accidentally locked the boy in his car parked outside the Lubavitch Educational Center where both parents work. Right now, it's unknown exactly how long he may have been inside that car. The director of Kids in Car Safety says the younger the child is, the more dangerous it can be. The younger the child, the less capable they are regulating their own body temperature. So an infant 
is going to overheat much quicker than a toddler. A toddler will overheat much quicker than uh, a teenager and so forth. According to NoHeatStroke.org, there have been 10 hot car child deaths so far this year nationwide. So here are some reminders, you know, parents, it can be really helpful here. Place a visual reminder in the front seat like a diaper bag or a stuffed animal. Or you can also place an item that you can't start your day without in the back seat like a laptop or a phone. And make it a habit of opening the back door every time you park to make sure no one is left behind. 611 right now. This morning we're learning Palm Beach County commissioners voted to reduce the maximum rate used to calculate property taxes for next year. Mayor Robert Weinroth says homeowners with a home valued at $600,000 will save about 65 bucks. He says with the higher costs of pretty much everything right now, this should give some relief to homeowners in the county. I think it's important to show our, our residents that we understand their pain and we're going, to, uh, we're going to tighten our belt and make sure that we're giving them a little bit of relief. The county commission also gave preliminary approval to the sheriff's office budget, which is an increase of $42 million. Weinroth says this will be finalized when the county commission meets again in September. 6:11. Now this morning, the city of West Palm Beach is dialing back the increases it made to the cost of parking downtown. We're learning city commission unanimously agreed to get rid of the 24-7 enforcement of parking rules after some pushback from business owners. Enforcement hours are now going to vary by zone. Before, parking rates were only enforced from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The fine for expired parking is also being lowered to $35, and the average cost to park for an hour will be $2.30. It is 612 right now. Bombshell revelations during another January 6th committee hearing, highlighting how former President Trump may have encouraged extremist groups to storm the Capitol. Ahead, the stunning accusation made about how Mr. Trump tried to interfere in the House investigation. And Amazon Prime Day, a prime opportunity for scammers to take advantage of people looking for deals. Before you go shopping today, you're going to want to hear how you can keep yourself from having your identity stolen. You're watching CBS 12 News this morning, the one to turn to.